Manufacturers are always on the boil to introduce new customers to their brand by introducing new entry level models. When it comes to making a new entry level model, it usually means making it as affordable as possible. Making it affordable means you have to cut costs and when you cut costs, the car usually takes a hit in quality. But how far is too far when it comes to making a new entry level model? This is the all new and very controversial BMW 2 Series. Today was my last day with the BMW 220D M Sport and I had to drop it back to Bombay at the BMW office. I wanted to keep my thoughts fresh for the last day because I wanted the car to prove itself. I say controversial because there are a few big no-nos to this car to call it a BMW. So I pulled to the side of the road for a cup of tea to explain the fundamentals of what a BMW should be. You see, there are a few fundamentals when it comes to making a BMW. Let me explain. First of all, the engine should be longitudinally mounted. Second, it has to be rear wheel drive bias, even if it's an all wheel drive car, which means the car has been set up to be a rear wheel drive car. And third, the weight distribution of the car should be 50 in the front and 50 at the back. Well, what about the 2 Series? It literally takes all of what I've just said and throws it out of the window. That's because this car is based on a Mini Cooper platform, which means it's predominantly front wheel drive. The engine is transversely mounted and the weight distribution is more of a 60 to the 40 at the back. But should that really bother you? Well, if you're one of those BMW purists who have straight sixes, shredded tires and Vanos kits for breakfast, lunch and dinner, then yes, this will bother you a lot. But what about us, the people who just like cars and want to have fun in one regardless of what it is? Well, there's some good news and some bad news. Let's start with the good stuff. The motor in this particular car is the 2-litre turbocharged 4-cylinder engine which is a diesel and mated to it is a 8-speed automatic gearbox by ZF. And well, this engine is super punchy. It breaks traction quite easily and it has 187 horsepower but the monstrous 400 Nm of torque. BMW have mastered the calibration between this gearbox and the engine. So when you put your foot to the floor, It picks up quite easily and well, it takes you to the power band immediately. Put all of that together and the 220D can go from 0 to 100 km an hour in a brisk 7.6 seconds. But the thing is BMW have put an M badge on this car and M cars are known to be one of the best handling cars in the world. So in order to demonstrate the handling, I had to take a detour and tackle some of the twisties in Lunavla. Even if this car is front wheel drive, they've managed to get a lot of grip out of it. In fact, it understeers quite rarely and you have to go at the 10 tenths of the car in order to get some sort of understeer. This all comes down to the special M Sport suspension that the BMW gets. It has fat 225 section front tyres and of course it gets an electronic differential of, as well, which helps increase the grip of the car even more. This doesn't feel like a 3 Series or any rear wheel drive BMW of any sort. It feels front wheel drive, which is not completely bad, but it's hard to come to grips with a front wheel drive BMW. But is it fun to drive? Well, I have this big white smile on my face and well, yeah, I can confirm it is fun to drive, even if it's a front wheel drive BMW. Talk to most Mini owners and they will agree that Minis are some of the most fun front wheel drive cars ever. And well, this is basically a Mini Cooper, right? After my spirited drive, I stopped by the side of the road to take in the scenery, or at least what was left of it, and talk about the BMW's controversial design.
Now I know there has been a lot of controversy when it comes to the 220D's looks and I get where those people are coming from. It doesn't look like your traditional BMW with the long front end and the short rear overhangs. Instead it does look kind of front wheel drive. But over time I've really grown to like this design. It looks angry and mean from the front. You know like those little dogs which have their teeth out always and you don't give them food. And it just looks fabulous from the front in my opinion and that all comes down to of course the M Sport kit that it has. You get the M Sport front bumper, side skirts and of course the diffuser at the back. Apart from that you get these nice LED headlights up front which are angry and pointy and you get this massive kidney grill over here. The side profile is also very likeable. It is a little bit different because it's the Grand Coupe but the real talking point about this design is of course the back end. Yeah, so this is the place where things get a little bit dodgy for me now. The back end, it has been the center point of the controversy because I mean it just doesn't look that great. But I mean over time even I have come accustomed to this design and it's starting to look a little bit better over time. My main issue with the back end is this little strip over here totally unnecessary and makes the car's rear end look bigger than it actually is. The tail lights are actually pretty decent looking and they're very similar to the tail lights that you get on like the 8 series, the newer 7 series and everything like that. There are a few good things about the back end in my opinion. You get real exhaust pipes over here and you get this M diffuser. But still there is a little bit of fakery going on with these air vents over here. Well. It is something that you'll get accustomed to over time but BMW please stop incorporating your coupe SUV design everywhere because I mean it's clearly not working. The interior is where this car truly shines. Everything feels super solid and put together in a proper manner. The seats are very sporty and have good amount of bolstering which is great for corners but not too great if you're thun my butt. Everything is tilted towards the driver. The infotainment system is super easy to use, has great graphics and has gesture controls as well. The gesture controls are a little bit of a hit or a miss because the handrest is a little bit too far back from the sweet spot of the sensor but get it right, it works quite well. It also gets voice control and BMW AI which is surprisingly quite useful and understands our Indian accent as well. But one massive drawback, it only gets Apple CarPlay and no Android Auto. So add another 80,000 to the bill of this car and get yourself an iPhone. The instrument cluster is also very bright and sharp and many people complain about the anti-clockwise stack. Well, it didn't really bother me too much. Probably the one complaint I have for this interior is the map screen. Probably they could have made it a bit more colourful because it looks like they've chosen the colour palette out of a war zone. The steering is also nice to hold and you get all of the controls you will ever need on a wheel like cruise control, volume up down, arrow keys, the menu scroller, perfectly laid out and you also get paddles. Since you have paid for the M Sport variant, BMW wants you to know that this thing has been touched upon by M. They literally have hints of M everywhere you look, all the way from the door sills to even the key. The 220D has a plethora of driver assists like cruise control, lane assist, Park Assist, Auto Park, 360D cameras and sensors. The cabin does feel quite small and the back seats feel a little bit compromised due to the sloping roofline but the big panoramic sunroof helps decrease some of that claustrophobia but the interior is the best thing about this car. As my journey slowly came to an end, the 220D had served its purpose. It might not have done it the way a traditional BMW would've, but it surely did make my journey enjoyable. The 220D might not be the definitive BMW, however it makes a good impression. It was comfy and relaxing on the highways, fun and enjoyable on the twisties and managed to kinda win me over in terms of its looks. The 220D is a great product and is something you should probably consider if you're looking at a Mercedes CLA or an Audi A3. It has the tech, it has the oomph and it is a very well-rounded car. Only if it was rear wheel drive. I wish.